Hi folks, we're out here on Ben's Citroen C4 Grand Prix Casso. We're out in Cyprus. He brought this over from the UK. And when it was in the UK, he had a fault on it, which is an intermittent fault. It's been in the garage. It's not been repaired. And it's happened a few times since we've been over here. So we haven't got no tools really. We've got no diagnostic meters, but we've had a look on YouTube videos and we think we found where the problem possibly could be. So we're gonna have a little look at it, aren't we? Fingers crossed. See you in a minute. Right, okay, so the fault we've got with this is that, well, you explain it, you're better than me and explain it. Well, I haven't really seen it, have I? Yeah, but I mean, you've taken it to the garage, haven't you? <laughs> it always happens when Trace is driving the <laughs> yeah, car. Yeah, it's not happened when I drive, to be honest with you. What generally happens is driving along and it'll just cut out. You get a load of, you get a bleep in noise. You get, you get a bleep and it comes up with... Um, ABS deep, service light. Yeah, parking brake fault. Parking brake fault. Deep, uh, no, not DPF, uh, anti-pollution fault. Yep. Gearbox fault is come up yeah, with as well. Come up with that and just dies. Yeah, Stop. listen to that. Look. Is it the U2? Oh, we let that plane go. Hold on. So we took it to a garage. Basically, took it to a garage in the UK. This was about a year and a half ago, and they said that because it's an intermittent fault, the fault didn't happen at the time, and. The fault, couldn't find it, basically. They couldn't find it, basically. They reset the fault codes, but obviously it's come up again. But we can't test that now. But it's happened six times in one day while we've been out here. I don't believe it. So we've had a look at a couple of YouTube, eh? I don't believe it. Well, it happened. I was there. We've had a look on YouTube. It's hard to type in the, the exact problem because a number of problems come up with it. So we have found a video on YouTube where it looks like the wiring loom could be the problem. So we're going to just have a look at that to see if there's any signs of any wire breakages. We might have to take some insulation off when we get that, but uh, that's what we're prepared to do now. So Ben's going to open the car up and let's have a look inside. Right, okay. This is the 1600 version. It is. 1600 diesel. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the fuse box on this one, as you can see, sits, where is it, down here somewhere? Yeah, that's the fuse box. Oh, that's the fuse box there. So we take the lid off to the fuse box. Oh, we might have to just pull this cover forward. Yeah, if we get these little studs out here, pull these out. If you just pull them forward, that should release yeah. a stud, shouldn't it? We just lower this because it's, it's got a, like a, a cover on here. So if we just pull them forward, we can pull that cover out and maybe we can see where the... Uh, the loom is, it goes up the side. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll see you in a minute. Right, okay, so we've just taken out this cover here and Ben's already found, where is it Ben? There, there. Some cables, as you can probably see there, look, can I show you them? So there is some chafing on this cable here, which could, when it's damp or get water on it, could be a bit of a problem. But the loom we're really worried about is actually, if you look down the side there, yeah, yeah that's the loom down there, the one that, which they show in the video. And for that, we've got to take out the... the um, battery here so what we have to do is undo the clips i think these just pull up there you go that just pulls the positive terminal off there right we're just going to try and get our hands in and get the negative off and we'll come back to you we get the battery out first and then we'll come back to you right a bit of a pain to get this off this clip here this obviously sits on top of the battery box and there's a clip around the side here which you have to release which we have done just by pushing in a screwdriver down in there, Ben, wouldn't it? Just that bit there. Yep. Yeah. And then this slides, the whole thing slides upwards off of this box. So you pull that to the side then, get all the wires out of the way, and then hopefully you should be able to then just pull this out. There you go. As you can see, that takes your battery cover out then. That's also being disconnected from the battery cover. Oh yeah, there was a, a lot of clip down there, as you can probably see down there, which Ben just disconnected that cable just by opening that clip up. Now, we should be able to see the terminal on the back of the battery, right in there. That again should just lift up. That's it done. And then we pulled the back battery terminal off as well, which I've just done there. And what we need then, it looks like a 10 mil maybe in there, just to undo that battery clamp, we should be able to lift the battery out then. So it's quite a complex thing to do. And your main thing is, is noting that that clip there is the one, as I said, that you have to lift up first of all, and then you, this whole thing lifts up, pull it to the side, then pull your battery box out. Right, we've got Ben's Fisher Price talk here. Yes, hey? a, uh, <laughs> Cypriot special. This Cypriot is. special. Right, so he's just gonna undo that. I think it's a 10 mil bolt in there, which is just that yeah. clamp 
for the battery box. Again, we're working with very limited tools here. We've got no um, manuals, no diagnostic tools. We're just going off of a video we've seen on YouTube and uh, hopefully this, at least it give us an idea of the problem anyway. If anything, Ben, we've learned how to take the battery out of one there of these go, today. Yeah. First time I've taken it out. It makes a change, Ben, for someone else to be doing the, 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 the handiwork. Because as I've mentioned, I've got a bad shoulder. Have you got a bad shoulder? Yeah. Right, so that's our little 10, was it 10 mil? Yeah, it was, yep. Yeah. Right, 10 mil. So hopefully now you should just be able to take that handle and lift that battery out. If I hold this cable over to the side, we'll get that battery out of the way then. Ooh. There we go. Positive is this side, isn't it, for going yeah. back in. Ooh. Right, there we go. Right, now we're cooking on gas. So this is the loom they show on the video of up here where the cables were damaged for this bloke's one. When everything looks intact there, although his, his insulation was all intact as well. But um, what, we, what we might pay us to do is just to slice that open and just to have a look. I'm looking at anything obvious first of all, any other damage there from any other loom coming off of there. Really see anything, I can't really see anything there, but when I'm looking here as well. Man, but I mean, getting the battery out gives us more chance of uh, seeing if there is any damaged cables. What about down there, for example? Oh, no, does that look all right? Yeah, it does. Because you could get chafing, couldn't you? Yeah, so we'll turn the camera off for a minute because we need to get in here and investigate a bit more. And if we do find something, we'll let you know. So we'll come back to you in a second once we've had a good look around in here. Right, okay, Ben's taken the insulation off of that wire. Right, and on the video, the chap had problems with the wires down here that were damaged. Well, we've had a look all through these and there's no damaged wires there whatsoever. So we're quite happy that there isn't a problem in that loom. All we've done was peel back that black insulation there, as you can see. So, we don't believe our problem is in there. Now, these looms go, obviously, into these fuse boxes here. And what I suggest that we do is pull these plugs out We've got some contact cleaner and squirt these all with contact cleaner and clean all these up. But also we've got one big nut down here, which you can probably see is a 10 mil. Uh, and apparently it's a common problem on these cars to suffer with water in the fuse box. So if we take that one nut out, I think we'll be able to lift out this internal bit to get to the underside of the fuse box and maybe see if there's any infiltration down there. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna pull them plugs out, undo that nut, and then we'll have a look underneath, clean all them terminals with some contact cleaner. And I think that's as much as we can really do without any proper info as I'm on all of that at the moment, Ben. What do you reckon? Always excuses, yes. I think that's a good crack. <laughs> right, we're gonna do that. So we'll see you in a minute. Right, so this is another little stumbling block which you may come across. These connectors at the back there, we couldn't find a video on how to do that, but lucky enough, Ben sussed it out. So how do you do it, Ben? All it is, a little clip here. Push it in, as he says. And then that, and then that just rocks forward. forward. There we go, and that pulls the plug out there. Little clip there. Little button there. Do it again, Ben. And then push them out. That's it. Got to go right yeah, forward, yeah. isn't it? Can they only go in one place? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So, so that yeah, one, their length, there, they go by the length of them. Remember, grey goes, oh yeah. The yeah, the, the, like, yeah they're, they're sort of bent in that cable's way. So there's two. We'll just move them to one side. That's it, simple enough, yep. So that's them three out. We've got that one there to do now, that uh, grey one there, and then it's just the 10mm bolt. Ah, oh, there we go, pulls forward, doesn't it? There we go. So that one underneath pulls forward. There we go. So that's the plugs all disconnected from the fuse box. So all we've got now is that 10mm bolt, which you can see in the middle there, which Ben's pointing to. We'll undo that, and hopefully that means we can withdraw this up now, and hopefully we'll see some uh, either corrosion or moisture underneath. So we're going to do that now. Oh, so that's 13mm, Ben. Yeah. Is it 13? Yeah. Oh, of course it is. Right, is that out? Some sort of washer, spacer thing, or whatever. Oh, that's a lug on it, yeah, right. Yeah. Right, hopefully, that should lift out now. Right, so what we found is that you do have to spread this open this way, pull it towards me. That relieves, see the grey down there? That little lug there sits over the grey, so we've relieved that. And what you, you said you found something else, Ben? It feels like there's something resistance in the back. Left corner. Right, was this saying? Maybe get a screwdriver in there. I can see some of it. Oh, well, ah, there we go. There we go. Pull it forward. There we go. Cook it on gas. That should lift out, Ben, as one complete module. And the wire's all underneath it. So if we can tip it forward, right, as you can see, there's no water or moisture underneath there. Now, do them fuses there? I think them fuses, Ben, at the bottom, Yeah. there's clips on the side of that. I think you spread these and then this slides out. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, there you go, it's coming. Oh, I can't do it with my hand. 
There we go. Now that should come right out of the way. That's the bit we wanted. Look at the crap in there. Now there's a load. Look at all the stuff in there, Ben. Turn it over. Let's have a look what's on the other side. Sealed unit, so that's a good thing. Yeah, you can see. So we can give out. this a good clean up with the contact cleaner. Yeah, you can see all the bits. Yeah, all this stuff in there, there's sort of thing, you know. In there. Yeah, look, there's all seeds in there and yeah, things. Yeah, that's down here. Yeah. Isn't it? So right, we're going to give this a good clean up now, and uh, we'll spray the underside of these terminals as well, and check these as well, and we'll give them a good squirt with the contact cleaner as well. That's as much as we can really do here, and uh, hopefully this is the only thing we can do to cure the problem. So we'll do this, we're going to give it a good clean up, we'll put it back together, there's really not much more we can show you on this apart from putting it back together the opposite way, and uh, then we'll see where we go. So we've got contact cleaner here, as you can see, and uh, that's what we're going to use to clean this lot out. So we'll get on with it and get back to you in a minute. We'll see you shortly. Right, there we go. We've just got a couple of covers to put on now. That's this one here. Yeah, yeah. Although that one was broken, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I broke it yonks again. You broke it the other day? Yonks again, I did, yeah. <laughs> Trying to rip at it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that one's on there. Where's the terminal? We've got that hose to go back on there, haven't we? Oh, yeah. So the battery's going back on now. These are good connectors, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I like them. Actually, I've not seen them. No, before. I haven't. So it's just that hose to go back into there. Yeah, and that connects this box. The lid goes for the fuse box. Just sticks that in there. So just this hose to connect up there. That just gives us a bit more room. We didn't need to take that off, but it just gives us a bit more room. That's in, that's in. Not Happy days. That clip there. Yeah, put that back in the bottom clip. Done. And there you go. Done. Right. We've got that just cover scuttle yeah. to go back on. Yeah. We'll just clip that back up and we'll come back to you. Yeah, right, that's everything back together now. As you can see, we've uh, tidied everything up, put the scuttle back on. So we're now going to give it a little start up and let's see if we've got any fault codes. We should take it around the block first, being I suppose, yeah, shouldn't we? So we do that. Right, that was hot, hot work, I must say. He's just coming back now. Oh. Right, coming in, Ben. Let's see if oh, we get I'm any warning sweating. lights or fault lights up. Let's have a look. Be very intrigued. So far, engine management light's gone, gone out. Off, yeah. Yeah, well, you've got to do that. You can do that, can't you? Hot on it. Yeah. Right, let's go on. Let's take it for a little drive and just see if we can go out the road and see if it comes up with any faults. All right, doors have locked. You got your seatbelt? Oh, yeah. Because we don't want that yeah. warning light coming up, do we? No, we don't. Right hand door open. Right, shut your door then. There we go. Right, so we're just going to give it a little run round. We know the flashing we got at the moment on there is obviously the clock, so we're not worried about that. We've got no other fault lights up at the moment. Right hand door. Right rear right door. Rear right door's open. Oh, yeah. oh well, we've got to do it, haven't we? Yeah. Shut that door, Ben. Go, go, go. There we go. Is that right? Door is shut. Okie dokie. So that's what we're looking at at the moment. No fault lights up. We actually got it back together and started the car up as you just saw. Because we took what we didn't show, we actually took the ECU out as well, didn't we? Yeah. But we didn't take it out of its cradle because it had tamper proof screws on the metal cradle surrounding it. And uh, I didn't want to touch them because we wanted to disconnect the ECU. Uh, connectors and give them a clean but we, we opted against it because you'd heard stories yeah, before I've that... heard stories where they've disconnected and they can't start the car up again I don't so, know how true it yeah, is yeah because it had tamper proof screws on we didn't touch it right what's the temperature outside we've got 33 degrees here at the moment as you can see where we are and so far seems all good doesn't it I don't, is it me or is it running better <laughs> You always think that, don't I know. you? Whenever you've done something to a car, I always think as soon as I drive it after, it runs so much smoother. Yeah. It's just, it's obviously psychological. Is it psychological, Ben? But you... Whenever I service it, I think, oh my God. It's running better. It runs smooth. But yeah, I always get that feeling. Let's go down here, shall we? Yeah. But yeah. so far... So good. My main concern with is that we disturb the cable and it then... That was Escalated, eh? Hey? Did you hear that? Feel that? I don't know if that was me. Just I think that was you, Ben. So go on. What was your main? I concern? forgot what I was going to say. Now, Ben, you thrown me there, and there was no set time it would do this for. It would just you could you were. I know it never really happened when you drove it, but when Tracy around. drove it, Very we was on a roundabout. We come off a roundabout just off of a, a, an A road or whatever it was. A motor, was it motorway? Uh, dual carriage. Dual carriageway, rather, yeah. and. Um, 
it cut out. And all the lights come flashing, handbrake didn't come on, it's supposed to automatically come on when it stops, comes to a stand, so that never happened. It come up as gearbox fault or whatever, it, I can't gearbox remember. Failure. Gearbox failure. Yeah. Um, ABS failure. So obviously it's some sort of multi-control fault. But it's hopefully lucky, I think, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. We're going by what we saw in that video where a chap found a broken wire on the ABS wire in that loom. But we've gone one step further than what he did. Although he did find a broken wire, we didn't. We found uh, dirty found connections. That. We found a very dirty fuse yeah. box. And we found that nick in one of those cables. Uh, yeah, really that could have that caused out. condensation. That's been taped up as well. So let's just hope it solved the problem. Time will tell. It Being will. an intermittent fault, there's not a lot we can do about it. So I just hope you enjoy the journey, what we're on at the moment, and uh, hopefully we've solved this problem. And if anything, you've learned how to take the battery box out of one of these and the cover on the yeah, battery box. Yeah. You've also learned how to take this... Oh. Hey. What's that? Anti-pollution system 40. What's it doing? That was me just changing gear. Then. Oh, right. Anti-pollution system 40. Now, what are the blink nails at? There you are. We've got another issue. Is that you? No. Hey, uh, that's what it done the other day. We haven't cured anything. <laughs> we haven't cured anything. <laughs> I'm glad you've experienced it, though. Now, let's see what happens. You know, we turn the car off and then turn it on and it will start again. It's quite right, so I'm going to start then. There you go. It started up again. This is exactly what happened before. Eh? Absolutely fine again. Now, Weird. if you know any of you Citroen people out there, what could cause that? We've done, which is the most obvious thing to do, which is clean the electrical fuse ball out and stuff like that. And you've just seen exactly what happened there. Is it doing it again? Yeah, it's going again. Now, what is the anti-pollution? So, see, we haven't got a code reader. We can't read it. Anti-pollution system 40. There we go. That's just come up now. It's like a train as well. Oh, there you go. It's gone. No, no it's gone. Again. There you are. That's what was happening before. Oh, exactly the same. That's what Tracy had the other day. Weird, isn't it? Now, and that's exactly what happened the other day. Yeah. Now, this is the first time he's actually seen yeah. it. Now, what is causing this? Turn the ignition on. Gearbox 40 comes up. Start the car up. And everything resets. There you go. That's our problem, still. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as I say, I haven't got my diagnostic socket here, so I can't plug it in. I can't find out what it is. We can only go by what the car's telling us. Very strange. I don't know. I thought we had it then. I thought we had it, yeah. It's as soon as I said it was running better. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, we still learned how to take the battery out. There you go, We've yeah. learned how to take the fuse box out. Yeah, give that a good clean. Yep, and it's not done the job. And as we all know, the fuse box on its way out. I don't know. An intermittent fault is uh, something which is very hard to find. And where would you go from here? Where would where would where would a Citroen garage go from here, rather than just parts change? Eh? that's yeah. the question. We'll we'll do a bit more investigation on the fuse box problem, which Ben's read about. I didn't know about that, obviously. So um, we know we've taken a fuse box out now, so we know we could take that out literally in about ten minutes yeah. if we needed to again or if it could be a fuse box problem. Well, I think the fuse box, we did look around it, it does come apart, Yeah. but we didn't want to take it apart because the lugs on it were so small. Although we did clean the terminals and give it a good clean out, there may be something inside where it could be tracking down. I don't know, I honestly don't know, Ben. I, I don't know, mate. It's just so annoying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there we go. How can, you, how can you work that one out? Well, I was hoping this video was going to help a few people. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gone the other way yeah, now. You can take the battery out and fuse. Yeah, but as I said to you, at least people can see that what this intermittent fault is, and if they can relate to it, they can see what we've done, and that hasn't cured it. Yeah. Because you'll hear stuff in forums where people will say, "Oh yeah, just take this out, clean the terminals, and that will cure my problem." We're well, not in this case. No, Unless we've dislodged something, I don't know. I don't know. Just... I, don't, I don't think so, Ben. I don't think so. It was anti-pollution might yeah, be worth looking that was the first thought to come up yeah that's where we're at folks that's where we're at right so we've got no option but to leave that there do a bit more research on the what was it the anti-pollution anti -pollution warning light yeah, anti-pollution right. warning light and see if that comes up with anything that's all we can really do I hope it's been a little bit informative to you this video although we've still got the fault it was just something we was doing while we we're on holiday at the moment and uh, no diagnostic equipment but at least we've learned a few things on how to strip this Citroen yeah. Picasso electrical system down and hopefully 
you've learnt something from it too. Anyway, thanks very much. See you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Bye-bye.